All right. I'm going to do percent yield. Yes, another test is today, and it's a little late, but uh, at least I'll be up here for a quarter exam. Let's say your chemistry teacher is one of those crazy ones that expects you to do stoichiometry. Oh, and you do problems like, say, that one. That's from your study guide. This three-step problem, <clears throat> we had to go from grams of oxygen to grams of water using the, the synthesis equation. So you've done all this fantastic, wonderful work, and now the question is, what next? <clears throat> this number that you get at the end is what we can call theoretical yield. It's what would happen in a perfect world <clears throat> if there were no loss of energy in the system, if everything was perfect, you measured out all your reactants perfectly and everything, that's what you were supposed to get, 141 grams of water. But as we all know full well, we don't live in a perfect world. And so you never see that. You never get something that's perfect in pretty much anything. There'll be a, what we call an actual yield. So theoretical, oops, sorry, there we go. Theoretical yield, what you would hope to get, what you predict, an actual yield is what you would actually get in your uh, real experiment if you actually ran that reaction and measured how much product you, you made. So let's say we run this experiment. And I am just going to make up a number here. I'm not actually going to get out hydrogen and oxygen and do the experiment. I'm just going to make up a number here. Let's say we actually do this experiment with 125 grams of oxygen. And in the end, we get 122 grams. Again, according to our math, our theoretical should be 141. We need a way of indicating how good our reaction was or how good we were at running the reaction. And we do that the same way you do in all your classes. We want to see how you, well you did your class, how well you learned your material. We calculate a percent and we put it on your report cards every quarter. And we do the same thing here. If we wanted to see how well we did our reaction here, how well our yield actually held up against the theoretical, we would calculate a percent. and it's called percent yield. It is actual divided by theoretical times 100. It's the same way you calculate any percent. A percent is a part divided by the whole times 100. So if you wanted to figure out your percent on a test, your part would be the number you got correct the whole would be the number of questions times 100. Again, part, the number you got right, divided by whole, the total number of questions, times 100. This is the same thing. This is the same equation. This would be our whole. We shouldn't get more than that. I mean, yeah, in school, sometimes you get 105% on tests with bonuses and stuff like that. But in the real world, there is nothing more than 100%. You can't get more than 100%. So the theoretical, this number here, is the whole. That's the max. That's the total that you can get. This number is a part of that. So when we look at the percent yield equation, it's no different than this one. Part divided by whole times 100 part divided by whole times 100. So we do our calculation here. The percent yield is going to be equal to 122 over 141 times 100. Now these things are the same unit and they have to be the same unit so they'll cancel because there's no unit on a percent. 122 divided by 141 is 0.86524822 times 100 
is 86.524. I'm just going to round that to a whole number because that's what I like to do. Our percent yield is 87%. So we can see here that that's not too bad a percent yield. If this were a class, that would be a very solid B. Not too bad. Of course, it could be better. We could have 90-something percent yield. It could be a whole heck of a lot worse. And we could have 30, 40 percent yield. Hopefully, your grade on the stoichiometry test is something closer to that. And not a 40 or 30 or something lower. Good luck with that.